I'm one of these people that believes, and I believe it in everything, but particularly so in this method, that what's going off up here is important. The way you're thinking is important. And I'd like to just examine a little bit the mindset involved, because I'm sure there are people amongst this audience here who gamble. I gamble myself, okay? I gamble myself. Uh, but what I want to do is to take you out of the gambler's mindset. Because, unfortunately, the gambler's mindset is essentially flawed. Why is it flawed? Well, let me, let me tell you why it's flawed, or why I believe it's flawed. This is the serious stuff now, folks. This is something called Abraham Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs. Some of you may have seen it. It's been used for many, many years, business schools, uh, leadership uh, classes, that sort of thing. Basically, what he says is this. We only start worrying about stuff when we've satisfied other stuff. In other words, there are different levels of the pyramid, and you only worry about the third level when you've looked after the first or second level. Better way to put it. Let's say a man is struggling to put food on the table for his family. He isn't worrying too much about what model company car his boss is going to buy. Do you see what I mean? We only, we only worry about that sort of thing when there's food on the table. If, you, if you're homeless and, uh, and uh, you're living huddled in a doorway, you're not worried whether Katie Price is going to do the next Bush Tucker trial, are you? You know, you've got, you've got, you've got more things to worry about, right? You don't, you don't care if Joe McEldry wins X Factor, right? They're not concerned, right? Because your concern at the moment is keeping out of the rain. And that tends to dominate your thinking when you're in that position. So, what Maslow says is this, okay, we move up the pyramid. You know, once you've looked after breathing and food and water, you start to look about look for having a job and a family and social stability and that sort of thing. At the top, the very top of this particular pyramid, are what Maslow regards as the successful, well-adjusted, content, happy people in society. And he called them self-actualised. It's his particular phrase, okay? Basically, it just means they've read the writing on the wall, they know how many beans make five, and they've got it sussed. Right, so they can now live happy and successful lives. Now, how does this apply to gambling? Let me tell you. Many, many, many people, apart from Maslow, who studied Maslow, agree with his definition here. This, these are the three tenets, the three characteristics of self-actualization. Forget one or two, I'm not bothered about them for the, for the minute. Look at the middle one. Detachment from all outcomes. Now students of Maslow have taken this idea, obviously, put it into their own words, and essentially what they've said is this. If you want to achieve success, you do what you do in the best way you can whilst remaining completely emotionally detached from the outcome. Can you imagine being like that? I wish I was like that. Because I'm always worried about the outcome of what I do or the effects of what I do. But no one's more concerned with the outcome of a situation than a gambler. And if you doubt that, please go to a horse race meeting and observe the complete emotional detachment from the outcome just as a horse race is finishing. <laughs> yeah. Glorify in the silence. You know it's not true. No, it's not true. So, isn't it funny that gamblers do exactly the opposite to what is required for success? I think that's an important thing to realize. So I want to take you out of that gambler's mentality. I want to get you to the situation where all outcomes are good. Some benefit you in the short term, some benefit you in the long term, but you can have complete emotional detachment from any outcome in respect of what you've done using this method. And that to me is the real attraction, because I've been a gambler for 40 years, right? And what I love about this is, I don't care what happens. They're all good. 
Just a boy, I mean, it's said in different ways, isn't it? Look at Richard Kipling, the poem if. If you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters the same, the gamblers treat triumph and disaster the same, they don't even know they're imposters, right? Triumph is winning over the moon, Jim. Disaster is losing down in the dumps. So, let's realise that gambling is essentially flawed. But we don't need telling that, do we? We don't need to be told that. We're grown-ups, we know. The gambling industry worldwide is enormous. I read a couple of years ago that it was uh, the biggest growth industry in the UK. It may well be the case, for all I know. But it's an enormous industry. It's run by people who treat it as an industry. They treat it as a business. They're not gamblers. And the one crux that this enormous industry relies upon is this. Gamblers lose. Because if gamblers won, there would be no worldwide gambling industry, if you think about it. There'd be no William Hill, there'd be no Ladbrokes, there'd be none of these poker casinos and all that sort of thing. The only reason this enormous industry, and it is truly gigantic, is because gamblers lose. Their thinking is essentially flawed. 